this is John Dawson of Patio Daddio Barbecue in Boise, Idaho, and I've got it locked on the 50,000 gigawatt blowtorch of the internet that is Barbecue Central. Shark the gate! Let's go! We'll do it live. Okay. Well, do it live! I can, I'll write it and we'll do it live! So to get that perfect barbecue, you use wood. Are you sure it's safe? Whatever. We put the lighter fluid on, strike the match, and... Oh. Should we call the fire department? That might be a good idea. To the really big barbecue central show. It is the show that talks about all things important in your world of barbecue and grilling, my world too. Originating from the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame city and the barbecue capital of the North Coast, Cleveland, Ohio. I'm your program host, Greg Rempe. Happy to have you aboard here. Great show packed for you this evening. You want to jump in via the phones? Let's do this. 216-220-0966. If you would prefer to email the show, this is how you do that. You can get in touch with the show by sending an email to Greg at BBQCentralShow.com or on the Twitter and Instagrams at BBQ Central Show. Anything else you want to find out about the show can be found at the main website, the BBQCentralShow.com. And here's what's happening. Coming up in about 12 minutes from now. And it's a show of first-time guests and long-time guests, two of which are FTs, one of which is LTs. And that LT happens to be a BBQ HOFer, since we're getting down on the acronyms right off the bat. But in about 12 minutes from now, we'll be joined by a first-time guest of the Barbecue Central show. He is a maker of pits. If you know anything about the show, you know I love to talk to pit manufacturers, whoever they are, wherever they are, and introduce you to either a style of pit or maybe a style that you know but you haven't heard of this particular brand. So here we go. And that is the case this evening. Everybody knows about offset pits if you're a fan of barbecue, low and slow, hot and fast, or what have you. But maybe you aren't familiar with this particular brand, and they are literally taking over the offset world right now. Based in Cumming, Georgia, I will be joined by Jimmy Daniel of Primitive Pits. These are pits that are going all across the country. A lot of them, believe it or not, are going down into the Texas area for specific reasons that we'll talk to Jimmy about here in just a few minutes. But very excited to have Primitive Pits on this evening. And if you haven't checked out their line of cookers, hit up the website primitivepits.com. And your first reaction might be like, whoa, they look like they've been road hard and put away yet. And believe me, they are very basic when it comes to the aesthetics. But when you talk to the people that own them, top men and women in the pitmasters industry, Primitive Pits ranking right up there along the top as far as even heat distribution, draw, keeping a fire. All the most important stuff. So we'll talk to Jimmy Daniel about that, or as he likes to be called, JD. So looking forward to that conversation. Then, because it is the first Tuesday of the month, we will join a barbecue Hall of Famer, somebody who was at the American Royal a couple weeks ago, and somebody who is really close to opening up his barbecue venture restaurant, his barbecue restaurant venture. Is it going to be tomorrow? Last month he was on. They had a... I don't want to call it a solid or firm date, although I believe it was announced as a firm open date of October 3rd. That's tomorrow. We will be joined by Dr. Barbecue, Ray Lampy, and we will follow up on that, Mark, as well as a number of other items. So always looking forward to catching up to Ray each month. And then we will move into the second hour. And I'm always excited to do this show. I'm always uh, excited to talk to new people. Because I never know what kind of energy and what kind of knowledge that they're going to bring. Certainly, 
when I'm prepping for the show and doing my due diligence, I like to go back and think that I at least have some kind of a background on what kind of information is going to be disseminated over the course of their segment. And this guest is so exciting to me on a number of different levels, not the least of which is, oh my goodness, this guy's local right here in Cleveland, Ohio. So to have a gem like this in my backyard excites me to no end. But what we'll be talking about this evening, nothing short of intriguing, exciting, safe, crazy, who knows, industry breaking, foundation cracking, or as John Dawson likes me to say, foundations cracking. All of the above, potentially. We're going to be talking about mushrooms and foraging. We're going to be talking about something called koji. And if you have not heard of that, by the time we get done with our conversation in the second hour, your mind will be blown. Specifically, when it comes to taste and dry aging of beef and what it may or may not be able to do in that regard. I am talking about the uh, one of the owners of Larder Delicatessen right here in Cleveland, Ohio. Also, first-timer to the show, Jeremy Umansky. Wow, am I excited to talk to Jeremy. Very excited. So there's your show as it lays out this evening. J.D. from Primitive Pits, Ray Lampy, Dr. Barbecue, and Jeremy Umansky, Larger, uh, Larder Delicatessen. 216-220-0966. Greg at the BBQ Central Show.com. As I've mentioned before in the open of this show over the last month or so, follow me socially because it's exciting and I bring you value. Instagram at BBQ Central Show. Same thing on the Twitter and Facebook slash BBQ Central Show. Quick reminder, the Bubba Burger contest ends at midnight tonight. So if you're hearing this podcast tomorrow, it's already over. Do not submit if you haven't already. That's October 2nd again. So while you're watching right now, head over to iTunes and leave a show review. Five stars if you see fit and use hashtag contest at some point in your evaluation of the show in order to be entered for the Bubba Burger shirt, hat, apron, and voucher for not one, not four, but six free hamburgers from Bubba Burger. So not only do you get the free apparel, you get free burgers as well. And if I can be candid just for a moment, because it is my contest, and I know I'm not blatantly asking for five-star ratings, would I like it? Of course. But it's certainly not a requirement as long as you give me real feedback. And here's what I mean by that. Here's a five-star rating that is currently sitting on the iTunes from somebody named Rax Labith. And his rating is this, always funny, always entertaining, always opinionated, but always honest, Greg puts together not only a great show about barbecue and live fire cooking, but also a great podcast in general, a nine out of nine stars. That is a good example of a good rating and review. Do I appreciate the five stars? Absolutely. Do I appreciate more the fact that he took time out to tell me what he liked about the show? I'm assuming it's a he. Absolutely. So Rax Labith is entered. Now, here's an example of how you won't win even if you use hashtag correctly. That's hashtag contest, by the way, specifically for this contest. For instance, and PNWBA left this rating, which, by the way, was a one-star rating, and this is what they said. Hashtag contest, hashtag no horse meat. Let me tell you something. Putting hashtag contest and hashtag no horse meat and giving me a one-star rating is not going to get you an entry into my contest. I mean, give me a break. If it's a one-star rating for you, honestly, I'm talking to you man-to-man and woman-to-woman right here, right now. If you're going to take the time to go to iTunes and rate me at one star, owe me the common courtesy of truthfully reviewing the show and why you think it blows that bad. One star rating and all you got is hashtag contest and hashtag no horse meat? Do you think even if I pulled your name 
I would abide by my own rules? Hell no, I wouldn't. One star rating. With no feedback? Why do you hate the show so much? I want to know why you hate it so much. Maybe there's something I can do to fix it. By and large, my thought is there's nothing I'm going to be able to do to fix it. But at least I'm open-minded. I'm welcoming criticism, constructive or otherwise. But don't give me a one-star rating and then not give me a review or why you really hate the show that much. Typically, if you hate me that much, you can write about five paragraphs on why I suck. So if you're going to review me in the crapper, do me the common courtesy of giving me some feedback before you give me that one-star rating. You're not going to win. PNWBA, if I pull your name out of the hat, it's going back into the hat, and I'm pulling out a real winner. One-star rating, no horse meat hashtag. What? JD from Primitive Pits coming up out of the break. I want to talk to you quickly about Green Mountain Grills. Hey, do you remember Wee Man? Wee Man got his first Green Mountain Grill from Jackass, the midget. He got a Davy Crockett. He's very excited about that. Great to have him on the GMG family. Hey, Wee Man, here's something maybe you didn't know yet about your Davy Crockett. Not only is it small and portable, but you're not sacrificing a tremendous amount of capacity even though the package is small. By the way, Wee Man, if you don't have access to your traditional plug to power this bad boy, as long as you have your car, truck, van, or SUV, you can use the 12-volt outlet right in your vehicle. And away you go. Plus, runs on wood pellets, so you're getting that great wood smoke. Now, maybe you want something a little bit bigger. Maybe Wee Man wants something a little bit bigger, and he's got to save his thin gilders. How about this? Might I suggest the Jim Bowie or a little less big or smaller, as we say in the United States, the Daniel Boone. Oh, yeah. Now, both of these have much bigger capacity than the Davy Crockett. A little more permanent in the setup as far as putting it in your backyard. Probably not going to take it on a lot of vacations or maybe a camping trip, depending on how long you're going to stay. But these are more for the backyard cooks. Great pellet cooking that you've come to know and love. Convenient, quick lighting, great flavor. Here's the benefit. You can take out the guts of both the Jim Bowie and the Daniel Boone and you can drop in the pizza oven insert. Come on, you got to love that. Now you can have pizza party on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, even on Sunday. Yay! Every day of the week. All you have to do is head on over to the website, GreenMountainGrills.com. That's GreenMountainGrills.com. And you're off and running. Plus, they got wood pellets to fire the cookers. They got sauces and rubs, all the accoutrement to make your pellet life easier with the Green Mountain Grills. Head on over, GreenMountainGrills.com. All right, Jimmy Daniel from Primitive Pits, out of the break. Stick around. We'll be right back. Casting live from the Barbecue Central Show Studios in Cleveland, Ohio. You're listening to the Barbecue Central Show. Once again, here's your host, Greg Rempe. And this portion of the show being brought to you by Butcher Barbecue, makers of award-winning injections, marinades, rubs, seasonings, barbecue sauces, grilling oils. All the Butcher Barbecue products have been tested on the competition circuit as well as in the backyards worldwide. Be the pit master of your neighborhood. Visit ButcherBBQ.com and stock up now. Always trust your butcher. Remember Dave Bosca, reserve grand champion at the American Royal Open. That's right. Hey, we love to talk about pits on this show. My one goal has always been 
to get top pit makers on here to talk about their products and how they operate. My first guest tonight is going to pick up this conversation from the last one that we had. Anyone notice that some of the most popular offset cookers out there are, well, let's say not overly sexy looking? My next guest falls into that arena, but man, these things are damn sexy when you look at how they operate and all the other stuff that really matters. So let's go to the Traeger Grills hotline and welcome the co-creator of Primitive Pits, Jimmy Daniel, joining me here on the show. Jimmy, how are you, buddy? Hey, hey. You know, we could talk probably for two hours solid about your, uh, do we call it previous life or what you were doing prior to getting into uh, pit production, which was... Uh, like recording and engineering life, producing uh, music and television and all that. So I guess if, if we could hit that just for a few minutes, is that a career path as you were growing up that you, you know, were mysticalized by TV and radio and music and wanted to get into it? Or uh, did you fall into that job? How does that work? I was a bad musician. I started out early on playing all the instruments from piano, drums, and was in bands. Um, and you know, I just really, uh, I guess I didn't work at it. You can point to that, but I didn't work at it enough to be a fantastic musician. And I try to write songs and, you know, when you get into school and you start playing sports, they don't mix well together. So I kind of shelved that, but I grew up in a family that my dad was, uh, you know, a big barbecue guy. He's always messing around with the smokers and he was always, uh, you know, tooling around tweaking and, you know, we cooked whole hogs. We cooked a lot. I was raised up in East Tennessee, so we cooked a lot of stuff, um, you know, that probably uh, would fit into the North Carolina category. But then, you know, he was also versed in some other stuff. So we, we got to meet some some people from around uh, Texas with our, our relatives and whatnot. And, uh, you know, I quickly thought barbecue was going to be something I did on the weekends and moved to Nashville and uh, stumbled into my first job by accident and, and honestly, you know, you sometimes don't choose your job. You just end up getting a pat on the back and you get confidence and then you're off and roaring and then your, your ego jumps in like, Oh man, I planned this, you know, 20 years ago. I didn't. Um, I recorded, um, and broadcast lots of bands from, you know, Van Halen to, uh, to, you know, Taylor Swift and, and, and still to this day, I bet you go around to some of these crews and they say, you know, mention something about Jay Daniel. We're talking about red meat a lot of times and talking about barbecue a lot. So when you got to Nashville that first time, you were still pretty much into barbecue and obviously into the day job. Did those two things mix with some of the people that maybe you were recording or working with and you were doing a lot of barbecuing on the weekends? <laughs> I did. I didn't have a whole lot of time because I got really busy, and then I just shut down for twenty years and and work. But uh, I always barbecued, and I even started to barbecue and have some clientele. People would call me because I had figured some stuff out that you know the backyard guys are always looking to figure out. And I made some friends in the food side, and you know Nashville's got a pretty good barbecue community and a pretty good red meat community based upon a lot of the artists. Uh, in the 80s were Texas guys and 90s were Texas guys. So you had some pivotal Texas guys putting restaurants in Nashville. And, you know, we were able to kind of have that vibe a little bit, uh, that Dallas, Fort Worth steakhouse vibe in Nashville, at least from our early years. But we cooked as much as we could. And uh, it didn't seem like we ever cooked on the same thing twice. We'd have block pits one weekend and then a month later we'd be you know, with some contraption, uh, a couple that I built that I wouldn't be showing off today. Jimmy Daniel joining me here on the show. Uh, J.D., when did you make your first pit? 1994. Um, I took an old Frigidaire, uh, which now they're vintage, and you see them, you know, they're outrageously priced. But, uh, like a refrigerator? Old, uh, trainer had given me. What's that? Uh, like old, a refrigerator? Frigidaire. Yeah, it was an old refrigerator, and I wow. gutted, gutted the compression out of it, and uh, I built a firebox on the side of it, and I wanted a vertical <laughs> smoker that I could smoke some of the heavy beats on the bottom. And then uh, I was a big dove hunter, so I, I would put, you know, a quail dove, and then I'd have, uh, at the time, I ate a lot of venison, so I was eating deer and, and uh, duck, so I would have that thing stacked uh, more non-traditional meat game, and uh, I'd have it from the heavy meat up to the, the, the smaller cuts and um 
you know, the smoker worked the first couple times because I, you know, I had so much, um, you know, passion for it that I, I wanted it to work. And then after cooking three or four times, I realized that there was some flaws to the draw. And that's 1994 is when I started really thinking about with the help of my dad, uh, thinking about how to, to make it, uh, draw really good and, and cover the meat and smoke. And, uh, that's where kind of the process started. And we, we went on a, a journey that, you know, maybe every three or four years we were building something. JD, how many revisions or how many versions of that first primitive smoker did you and your dad run through before you said, Hey, we feel pretty good about what we have and let's go ahead and look at making this a legitimate business. <clears throat> Well, the legitimate business came a long time after the fact. I built eight smokers, and out of eight, I would stand beside two of them with a grin and say, these are really good. Um, I didn't know much about horizontal draw. Um, I just knew that you know, if you get some air in one side and you have a decent stack on the other side, you're going to get some coverage on your meat. But it uh, was, was actually the music business. We started putting some of these smokers into uh some some concerts some events um and the rental business kicked off and that started you know really the end of 2012 2013 and i had no intention but it was a good segue it was a really good way for me to explain to my wife what i'm doing and walk away from the music business which i still deeply passionate about and have a lot of friends but it was actually the rental business that um you know of course we build this smoker that aaron franklin has pretty much put on the map and whatever the story is or how that came about from, you know, John Myler or whatever the previous history that is, it doesn't matter. It matters the fact that it's a successful smoker. It's, um, uh, it's James Beard nominated and won. And, you know, maybe Aaron's got a high skill set, but if you put this in front of the right guy mm. or girl, they can smoke some barbecue on it. So it's probably in about year number two of rentals. I was actually smoking myself at a festival called Brewing the Feast in Greenville, or I'm sorry, Clemson, South Carolina. And uh, a couple of guys that still work with us today, we were sitting around going, this thing is, it's great. I mean, it burns. We had it about 285, and we ran across the entire grates. We didn't have hot spots. And I was like, well, we need to keep this one. And that actually became the very first unit I sold because um, it was a good rental unit and a barbecue place in Atlanta called Blue Freckle. Uh, still in existence today, bought it. He was a food truck at the time, and we took it to him, and I told him, I said, I regret selling you this, but this, you're the first guy. And uh, from there, I kept thinking, okay, it's going to slow down. And like, you know, I think Sonny Moberg and Mill Scale, we all kind of probably in the back of our minds said, well, we better be ready to do something else. <laughs> but Texas barbecue is, uh, I love all barbecue, but Texas barbecue has been good for this smoker. Uh, it's 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 a pit that you can really turn out product that's wow. You have wow moments when you eat um, brisket ribs, whatever you're putting on this thing. You know you have the ability to really turn some heads. And obviously, you are pro Texas barbecue. But when somebody like me or people that are like me or listeners of the show, they just want an implement that they can get in their backyard, or maybe they're looking to get into a catering business or open up a barbecue restaurant something that they can count on, something that is consistent, something that's even temperature from left to right, whether you're doing Texas barbecue or Kansas City or uh, California or, or, or all points in between. And that's really where the tipping point is that separates a primitive pits versus some of the other stuff that's existing on the market, correct? Right. Um, first of all, it's kind of like going with craft beer went through the same segment where everything gets bigger, 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 scaled down. Barbecue has gone through the same change, and it's been happening for a little over 10 years, and you can put different, you know, uh, you can put your finger on different uh, timetables of where it's happened regionally, but uh, cooking with wood and cooking primitive, how we got our name, has been my passion for years. I've loved building fires and cooking over wood for well over 30 years, and my dad instilled that passion. And uh, so this is not easier work. The easy work was back in the 90s and 2000, per, first part of 2000 to 2006 or seven. you saw people putting in, you know, units that you could throw a log in and go home. And then all of a sudden this, this paradigm shift to the, the, the hardworking, 
um, you know, the, the kind of the steel workers mentality of you're going to have to babysit this fire for 18 hours. And that's what we, we build, but it is very even and it's, uh, it burns extremely clean. Uh, once you get the, the fire hot and you're ready to go and put meat on, um, you know, if you can manage a, a campfire, you can truly manage and learn to manage this thing. But we are, we are in the business of putting guys uh, that really enjoy the Texas style barbecue uh, in business outside of Texas. Of course, we deliver every 10 days to Texas, but um, you know, we are we're in Milwaukee and Memphis, Nashville, Knoxville, Los Angeles, Portland, Denver. You know, we've got smokers going in various areas and a lot of those guys are either influenced by the central Texas barbecue um, or they are coming from, a, a pit room you know some of these guys were coming from you know big big name places mm-hmm. whether it be franklin's or or uh you know brennan lamb from you know who's starting his own deal and he's phenomenal great with us and uh we've enjoyed working with him to you know some of these guys that have had um you know uh tejas chocolate to to uh to some of the guys that have actually had some real experience working on you know smokers cooking high volume Maybe you will see one up in Cleveland, right? Yeah, baby. <laughs> you know, I, was, I, I, I had a bet down, and I started the stopwatch. We have we have a fifty dollars bet when we were going to have to give a babe to Greg. And, and, and you know what? I lost. Who? Oh no! I, I, I bet the Damn over. It. I bet the over. Of course. So, so Chris win. Chris win uh, wins the bet, and uh, Greg, we will <laughs> we will uh, we'll we'll make a loose promise. We'll get you a babe up there. Uh, you know, so you can test out the sub, sub, you know, minus tens. Yeah, modesty, not my uh, strong suit, of course. Uh, so you mentioned no. Bay, but what other models uh, does Primitive Pits offer? We we make four models. We make we just introduced in July these two backyard series, and it was a risk. And I know the other guys that build smokers contemplate the same thing with the tariffs and price of steel. Mm-hmm. We have two backyard models. It's a 120 water gallon smoker that we call the Babe. It's a non-insulated firebox, but, you know, we found that if you, we did insulate the first one and uh, semi-insulated, and it just burned the chamber, you know, it just really was too much. And then we have uh, the 250, which is a semi-insulated, and it is very identical to our 1,000 and 500 gallon. And honestly, uh, scale-wise, that cooker cooks really good. Mm. Um, you know, the downfalls, you can only get nine biscuits on it so uh but then we have the 500 which is a a, a big catering uh, option we're building right now the month of october we'll build seven or eight of 500 wow. and uh and then we have the thousand and the thousand is you know the big guys that uh you know they're putting 26 briskets on that machine and you know you're managing uh a fire to get 26 briskets out to be you know, feed your family, but to, to wow people. So it's a, it's a big undertaking. I, we've got people that have multiple thousands. From a, uh, well, I guess, uh, what are price points at just starting well, out? Obviously I would imagine well, you could customize to a certain degree, our, but where are they at? Our whole mission has been to keep the price point really low. And the reason why is we want to support, you know, it's hard to go spend 50 grand to open up a kitchen and that's just on cookers. Right. So we've got the backyard, which we released in uh, July. It is 1890 on skids. We do offer some options to it. We can put a, a couple things on it, you know, cowboy grill where you can cook some burgers over on the other side. On the firebox, we can add casters. We can add probes. Uh, the Bubba is the 250, 250 gallon. It's 3400. And then we have the 500, which was named the Bull, is 5820. And then the thousand gallon is eighty eight hundred on skids, and uh, you know a couple grand more you could be on a trailer, and you know we know our price point is is uh, dangerously low, but uh, I got in this business not only to uh, support barbecue and Central Texas barbecue, but I we we set out to put people in business to spread what well, we ourselves felt, you know, completely. Uh, mesmerized by when the first time we ate it, which I ate it in the early nineties, but you know, for Chris, he, you're talking about a guy who's, you know, with 10 years into taking the first bite of a brisket that, you know, you sit there and shake your head and go, how? Uh, JD, this is probably, uh, when you talk to guys that are building pits that are similar to yours, 
The next question, aside from how many models he offer and what the price point is, is what the lead time is. I mean, Sonny Moberg, I think, is approaching, if he's not there already, two years out. I think mill scale is probably a year or well over. So are you in a similar time crunch, or are you a little bit better than that? Those guys are my heroes. Um, no, we're, we're, um, we have a different model. We have two things that we do differently as far as our timetable as versus let's, and there's a bunch of other guys out there. There's some guys out in the West coast we know about that build some great smokers and whatnot, but we have a priority list. So we first about fi- find your priority. We've got shows like barbecue pit masters. It's you know, we're going to have some smokers going to uh, prime and Raleigh in February. And we've got some guys that aren't on a, we need it now list. And we make a priority list. So we try to be under the seven week timetable. And it's been difficult because last year, you know, we, we weren't able to do that. We were, you know, before social media really hit us, we still had a word of mouth with our real clients and we were backed up months, but, um, you know, six months, but now we're really committed to being seven weeks. And, uh, right now we're right at Thanksgiving, unless you're really needing it. We've got a couple guys that are wanting to open up and do some stuff right away. So we're, we're pushing them out. Uh, but seven weeks is our, our target. And, um, I hope that, you know, nothing against Sonny Moberg's operation. I don't know him personally, but it, he builds some phenomenal stuff. It looks yep. great, yep. but uh, I don't want to be backed up two years for the price of steel. The, the tariffs and the price of steel have gone up, uh, you know, almost triple since I started doing this and it's, it's dangerously close to, you know, where we're really having to watch what we do on the price. And, you know, it's, we don't, we're not getting rich on this thing, but we are enjoying ourselves. And me and Chris, we, uh, we talk barbecue every day. So that's, that's, we still get to live our dream. Jay, if somebody's on the website and they pick one out, what's the best way to go about ordering to try and get in that seven week window? They call you or hit you up on the they, website they, or what? They just call us, call us on the phone. Ashley's a man on the phone or taking care of that every day. We can also primitive pits at gmail.com. Um, we try to be very uh, quick in responding, give detailed information about what we can do and when we can do it. Um, Primitive pits at gmail.com is the way Ashley, I think, would like to handle our flow. We, you know, we are um, definitely, you know, have a high volume of emails. And, you know, a lot of folks are calling us too about, hey, how do you do this? And what's, you know, the back guard guys that are building smokers. And, and uh, so we have to, you know, give those guys time. But for orders, whatnot, we'll send out a sheet that'll give you a chance to, you know, see our specs for each one and then uh, choose. If you want a trailer, not a trailer, and you know, right hand, left hand. Um, there is such a thing, by the way, Greg, as a right hand and a left hand smoker. I was just going to ask, that is that later. a real thing? <laughs> well, it is a real thing. It's actually when you look at the back of a trailer and you walk up on the trailer, you've got a firebox, and then you've got the, the chamber. We've done it to where if you're on the passenger side, that's a right hand. If you're on the driver's side, that's a left hand. It hmm. just helps us to where we're, you know, we start cutting into these things. We don't want to get a uh oh. Um, so, you know, that's part of the process, but, you know, we'd love to build smokers for anybody and we don't, you know, we're not alienating the Carolinas and Memphis and we've got guys that cook whole hogs. We've got the Fox brothers in Atlanta and, you know, this is probably the, they're waving the biggest flag in both Texas barbecue, but they also do some great work in, in the, you know, the Carolina and the Tennessee style as well. And they're very uh, creative on the menu, but they, they've, uh, got a 500, that they use for catering. So, you know, by all means we can, we've got a guy that cooks fish, smokes fish on a, on a 250. So let's, let's keep it, uh, keep it open. Seven week lead time is absolutely phenomenal. We're talking with JD, Jimmy Daniel, of primitive pits. And again, that website is primitive pits.com. If you have any questions, primitive pits at gmail.com. JD, really appreciate the time this evening. Great introduction to Primitive Pits, and uh, we'll do it again soon, man. I really appreciate it. Yeah, man, Greg, I appreciate it. Thank you for having me on, and uh, just keep hitting me up for that, babe. You got it. No problem. You know I will. There he is. It's uh, JD, that's right, from Primitive Pits. All guests appear via the Traeger Grills hotline. Mm-mm-mm. Yummy. About that. Quit hitting me up for the free cooker. (laughs) 
Come on. Don't roll like that. But if you're throwing them around, you know, if one lands in the backyard due to tornado or Mother Nature event, you know, not going to kick it out of bed for eating crackers. Unless crackers is my dog. <laughs> then we got a problem. All right, sorry about that technical issue uh, right at the top of that. Not sure what happened. But hopefully we got it iced out with Ray Lampy, who's coming up next. Let me talk to you quickly about the Barbecue Guru. You know, they've always believed that outdoor cooking should be easy. You know why? Because it can be. That's right, especially with the Monolith Barbecue Guru Edition Grill. The Monolith, the world's first temperature-controlled smoker with a built-in power draft fan right in the cooker. This means smarter control, greater freedom with automatic temperature controls. Especially if you're looking to do that ease of cooking time and temperature. Let the monolith do all that work of a sous chef or a barbecue pit master. You just enjoy minimal effort and enjoy that oven-like precision at the grill. You can serve the tastiest, juiciest meals each and every time. Consistency is the key. And the monolith cooker gives you that option. Now, here's the perhaps even better news for you. If you're like, hey, Rempy, I'm into this Monolith Guru Edition grill. I love the fact that it has the fan, but I already have a DigiQ2 controller. I already have a CyberQ Wi-Fi controller. What am I going to do? Do I have to get a brand new controller? Nay. You can take that controller and wire it right to the fan that's in the Monolith, and you're off and running. Now, if you want to upgrade, certainly your prerogative. You go to bbqguru.com. Or you call them at 800-288-GURU, and they'll make sure they answer all your questions so you have exactly what you need to get up and running when you get all your stuff. By the way, programming note, Tuffy Stone and Barbecue Bob Trudnack will be on this show end of the month. So look forward to that. Talking about European barbecue. We'll also be talking about American Royal, I'm sure. Lots of great stuff with Bob and Tuffy. All right, Dr. Barbecue coming up out of the break. Stick around. We'll be right back. Continuing to produce incredibly mediocre content in an exceptionally professional way. You're listening and watching the Barbecue Central Show. Once again, here's your host, Craig Rampey. All right, welcome back. This portion of the show being brought to you by CookinPellets.com. Your... Maybe you got questions oh, about barbecue right. or oh, grilling. Right. Maybe oh, as a hob. Okay, pal, just hold your horses. We're not there yet. This portion of the show being brought to you by CookinPellets.com. Your number one source for quality wood pellets for all your pellet-driven cookers. You visit CookinPellets.com. That's C-O-O-K-I-N, CookinPellets.com for more information or to purchase. If you would rather purchase from a bigger online outlet, you can go to Amazon.com and purchase as well. Very easy. Amazon.com or CookinPellets.com to get your cooking pellets. I know I just told you the Barbecue Guru is lining up for end of the month, but we're also going to be chatting with CB from Cooking Pellets before the year is out as well. How about that? It's a lot of great stuff that we have going on. Many great guests lining up as it were thanks again to jd jimmy daniel for joining me this past segment talking about primitive pits and if you are any fan of uh off-site off-site offset cookers you've probably heard of primitive pits uh, 
So he had mentioned Sonny Moberg. Sonny was on, I believe it was the very beginning part of July this year. So that was a couple months ago. Uh, you would also find companies like uh, Mill Scale and Austin Smokeworks. Not sure who Aaron Franklin was using or is going to use when he gets into fabricating his own backyard cookers that he's been talking about. I don't even know if that's in production yet. Maybe that's got shelved or tabled. Certainly we'll figure that out as well. But if you're into that style of cooker, then certainly that's something that you're going to want to take a look at. And again, it's seven weeks, Lee. Seven weeks. Wow. It's insane. All right, hold on a second. Ray, you there? Ray? Ray? Greg, can you hear? Okay, I'm, I'm... there he is. Hello, Ray. No, uh, no camera tonight? You're running from the police? <laughs> yes. Yes, I am. you are? Okay. I actually just kind of ran in the office, and that's what we ended up with. I forgot about you. You forgot about me? Don't say it out loud, Ray. Come on. Oh, oh, you, were busy, watching the, you were watching Monday Wait. Night Football or something, right? We are. I'm actually watching wrestling. Yeah. Okay. Well, geez, man, I can't win tonight. Holy moly! Uh, Ray Lampy joining us here on the show. Uh, Ray, so uh, let's go ahead because I think you were just going to reference it. So let's go ahead and get the latest and greatest with Doctor Barbecue's restaurant. Where are we at? We got. We today we got our permits all done. We we are going to actually open this restaurant As really of today. Now I can't. I I don't know that we've gone public with this date, but I'm going to reveal it oh, oh. Uh, with a caveat that you know it may not it still could not happen, but I think it's done deal. Um, uh, October seventeenth will actually be opening day. October seventeenth. Pretty sure. <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> All right. So look, I, I don't want to let the cat out of the bag here, Ray. But uh, in case you don't always listen to the show, there is some action going on uh, about the opening date and the embedded correspondence and I have taken up a little bit of a pool since our visit oh, last no. month and bet on the actual dates of, because I think uh, last month you said it was going to be tomorrow, which is October 3rd. That was the latest <laughs> date. And so we were like, hey, let's take up a pool and blah, blah, blah. So I said October 15th. So, Ray, I mean, if there's any way you could move it up 48 freaking hours... I'll win sixty dollars. How about that? That's life changing money. Does someone have the seventeenth, or you? You know, maybe you're the closest to Greg. Well, so we have uh, John in Michigan says October twelfth. Uh, Greg Rempe in Ohio says October fifteenth. Doug Shiding says November first. I mean, the balls on that guy. Uh, that's not any love, Doug. Wait a second. You think that's bad? Steve from Tennessee says November fifteenth. Holy moly. <laughs> now, here's the caveat to the dates. Uh, it's not closest to, it's closest to without going over. So, the minute you don't open on the 15th, I immediately am out of the uh, opening. So, it looks like Doug is probably sitting in best position at November 1st, even though I might be only two days away. Well, as much as I'd like to be offended by all of this, I, I really can't <laughs> defend myself, and I don't blame you guys for having a pool. All done but anyway, I, I think we're going to do it the 17th. Ray, were you surprised, or, or did you know that the restaurant already already has reviews on the internet? I, I've seen that. I'm not involved these, in it. Uh, the nerve of these people. I mean, give well, Ray a break. Good, right? I know. You got like a 4.5 out of 5 rating already. <laughs> yeah, That's pretty I good. I want to know the guy that didn't like us. So at least the five's okay. You know, people that like us and and are looking forward to it and excited, or maybe they got a, they got hired to work there and they're trying to be supportive. Oh, but yeah. who's the guy that gave me a two or whatever that one is? And those guys like never give you any feedback. I was just crying about that in my open because I'm running a contest, and I said go to iTunes and leave rate and review the show. So it's twofold. It helps the show get a little bit more visitive visibility in the iTunes platform because for podcasts that's still like the most popular platform but then you can also use the hashtag contest and you can win some bubble burger stuff blah 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 but you know if you're gonna leave me a one-star review like somebody from PNWBA did one-star review and no feedback like if you're gonna bust my balls at least tell me why you hate me so much so I can take some of that constructive criticism. Don't just drive by me. 
leave a one star review, and then put hashtag contest. Because guess what? If I pick your name, I'm not giving you the prize, you son of a bitch. I mean, give me some, give me some feedback, right? I mean, that's the worst. Well, if you've been following my career, though, this is not new to me. I, uh, if is anybody used to hang around on the barbecue forum, at some point I started a blog, like an early barbecue blog. And then someone started a Dr. Barbecue Sucks blog. So really? I, this is not new to my life, so I'm kind of okay with it. And restaurant or book reviews, you get you get people that say, man, this is really a good book. Two stars on, on Amazon. It's so frustrating. So I'm just kind of used to it. Ray Lampy joining me here on the show for the uh, traditional Ask Dr. Barbecue segment on the first Tuesday of every month. Uh, Ray, let's change topics here just for a second uh, now that we're squared off on uh, the uh, newest opening day, which I believe uh, is probably going to hit. Uh, it seems like all the other I's and T's are dotted and crossed. So uh, November 17th Con- is what we're looking congratulations, at. Congratulations, Doug Shiding, for yep. winning the pool. Right. I- I'm sorry, October 17th, uh, not November 17th. Yes. So we'll look for that. Um, let's talk a little bit about the American Royal. That was a couple weeks ago. Uh, first, let's go ahead and recap a little bit of the Hall of Fame stuff. Obviously, Tootsie and Tuffy, uh, Charlie Virgos goes in posthumously as well for Rendezvous Barbecue. We talked a little bit about it leading up to it, but you know I'm always interested in getting your take after the event happens and things that might have happened as the uh, ceremony goes on. So uh, I guess, A, first and foremost, what kind of crowd was there as the inductions are going on? Well, actually, it was a big crowd because Good. we did it immediately before the uh, the Invitational Awards. So everybody was sort of held hostage waiting for us to finish. Um, but I like to think they would they enjoyed it while they were there, you know, especially with a guy like Tuffy, who's such an, an active cook and a member of that community. So so uh, so we had a nice crowd, but it was certainly, you know, because of that. But that's OK. You know, I mean, that's mm-hmm. what they need to do. Uh, um, encourage it, and and the old the new cooks need to be looking at you know who are these people and aspire to get in there, uh, you know to be part of the Hall of Fame. So it was good, it was positive. Everybody in, I think enjoyed it. They paid attention. Um, you know, Tuffy of course is is you know a, a current guy that everybody knows, and and he's such an emotional guy. Tuffy's tearing up on stage, <laughs> and you know it's such a home run there. But Tootsie was the surprise for me. I'd never met Tootsie. I mean, I've heard like everybody else what a, a cool rock star she is. But, you know, I, she's 82 years old. I'm thinking, come on, she's a pit master at 82. Can she really be that active? Man, she's a firecracker. Yeah. I believe she loads those pits every Saturday and, and cooks that barbecue. She's something else. And she has a full-time job at the school that I never knew. Uh, that was a real treat for me to meet her. And and she is everything everybody says she is. What a sweetheart. And, and you know, well-deserved. And then, uh, of course, the Vargos family, I had not met them as either and they were great as well the rendezvous man a very famous place you know and not my favorite place to go eat barbecue but doesn't matter it, certainly a legitimate hall of fame member so so that was a real treat so what's really fun the, the best part and, and hopefully it'll get better and better is they had a black apron event for us so it, it's nothing too special they had some beer and some snacks for us but when you're there just standing around talking to you know at the next table is myron and melissa and and pat burke and i'm sitting with chris Lilly talking to tuffy and you know just the Unfortunately, there's not as many of us there as you would hope there would be. But mm. even so, you've got uh, a dozen Hall of Famers and then, you know, another dozen hangers on and our friends that happen to be there that are, you know, ultimately be in the Hall of Fame, too. So it's a pretty cool thing when we start taking pictures. I don't know if you saw a picture with all of us yeah, there together. You know, I mean, it's that's really a treat to get to see all them people and 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 celebrate. And, they, you know, they're trying, man. They really are trying. Uh, they gave us. Uh, un, un, uh, well, Yeti got behind it and gave everybody a nice little uh, Yeti cup that had the Hall of Fame logo on it. And uh, then they had Hall of Fame flags for us, a full-size big flag that just has the logo and says Barbecue Hall of Famer. Uh, pretty cool. I just gave it to my partners today, and they were like, oh, we got to get this thing framed or something. And it'll be a giant frame. But, but so they're, they're trying. It's really, you know, it's doing good. It's just going to take forever, man, to get, you know, we just got such a late start on this thing that think about the people we're just inducting. You know, Tootsie, right. yeah, she's still active, but this is someone that's been around forever. Uh, Charlie Vargos is an old guy. I mean, you know, it's just – we need to induct 50 a year and, and you know, we can't do that. It doesn't, wouldn't make sense, but we're just so far behind that. It's just frustrating. 
in regards to the competition, and I was definitely interested to get your thoughts here this month as we recap it, was Bunch of Swines, which is a UK-based team winning the American Royal Invitational. I know you are familiar with them, so it probably wasn't a huge surprise to you that they won, but uh, first European team to take down that crown. Yeah, that was really cool because they're good friends of mine, and I've known them over in England for years, and I've handed them some grand champion trophies as the MC of the awards over there. So, so I know them well, and I know that they know how to win. They have been an awesome team, and they've been coming over here now for yep. years. Yep. You know, cooking the Jack and the Royal. This is not. There's no accident. You know, um, you know. I don't know how people felt about it, but I was. I was really thought it was wonderful, and I think they've made a lot of friends over here too. But they they absolutely deserved it, and they were like unconscious. I was right there as so I ran. <laughs> right up to the front and took pictures like from three feet away and sent them overseas right away to all their friends in England. Um, so I, I thought that was just great. Uh, you know, good for them. Uh, what a cool thing. I mean, it just shows you how far this has all come. You know, when Jackie Waite won the Jack, <laughs> I, I still contend that was a legitimate win, but yeah. nobody else, n- people were blown away by the whole situation and, and just, you know, couldn't believe what had happened. Uh, I don't think anybody's that surprised by Ed and Emma winning. If you know him, you're not surprised. And certainly nobody was surprised that Iowa Smokey D's claims their third open title in five years. Uh, so I don't think anybody's won more open titles than them in the last five years for sure. Do you think Darren will be voted or do you think Iowa Smokey D's would be voted into the Hall of Fame next year? <laughs> well, I guess if somebody would nominate him, it, it'd be pretty hard. Nobody nominates him? him? I mean, you got to be kidding. I, I've never seen his name on the ballot. I don't know who all gets. We don't see the nominations. Um, they whittle it down to a manageable number and then right. we get to vote. Uh, so I've never seen Darren's name on the ballot. My God, it'd be hard to not vote for it. One of the things, and I said this to the guys the other day when we were there, I was kind of the host of the Hall of Fame thing. And one, as a voter, I look for what, what have you done? I'd like to see, you know, have you been involved in more than one thing uh, like Tuffy? Tuffy? Tuffy's a restaurant guy. Tuffy is a legit chef with a catering business. He's got barbecue restaurants. He's obviously a good guy competitive cook uh he's written a cookbook he's not done a lot of he does classes he's really touched a lot of the the phases of barbecue and i think that's a big deal and so has darren you know darren's just mm-hmm. killed it as a competition cook these last five years or so but but darren's running a really good restaurant there yeah. and catering company in iowa as well so I, it'd be hard to not vote for him if somebody nominated him uh ray last question and i appreciate the time as always each month that you give here to the show And I'm not sure where this will rank with you, but last week we did our first Barbecue Central Show Guest Hall of Fame inductions with the Embedded Correspondents. And uh, a Barbecue Central uh, Show exclusive news update. As far as best recurring guests going into the 2018 Barbecue Hall of Fame class, Ray Lampy, you make it in. As I beat Meathead? Yeah. Well, Meathead also <laughs> got in, too. But, I mean, uh, you know, you get in. So now uh, it's like two halls of fame for you. Uh, I'll, I'll give you like five or ten seconds for a, a acceptance speech if you want. I'd like to thank the Academy and the Im- embedded correspondents. And, and thank you. I mean, it's been a lot of fun, man. We've been doing this for a long time. I, it's, you know, it's nice to get this great honor. Um, is there any cash prize that goes with it? Yeah, $100 check in the mail. Don't ask me about it again. Yeah, I'll be looking for it. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, well, uh, so big deals coming up. Uh, look for October 17th for Dr. Barbecue to finally open. And uh, Hey, we'll yeah, make- today I took – actually, I'll show you how serious it is. I took three truckloads of truck uh, trophies and plaques and pictures and all kinds of stuff over there today. The final touches. To get hung on the wall. So nice. it, it's serious, yes. All right, so we'll see. Uh, next month, where everything shakes out. In the meantime, you can check Ray Lampy out on his website, drbbq.com. And the first Tuesday of every month, you can check him out right here on the Barbecue Central Show for the Ask Dr. Barbecue segment. Ray, always appreciate the time. Thanks so much. Okay, see you, Greg. You got it. There he is, Ray Lampy. Dr. Ooh. Barbecue. All guests appear via the Traeger Grills Busy man. hotline. Well, oh, I, I don't want to uh, pull the curtain too far back by exposing the pool. But as I figured, Ray would take it in good stride. The bad news is I'm going to lose. I should probably change the rules and 
win that. I mean, I'm going to be way closer than Doug with a November 1st. Steve's at November 15th. John's out for sure. I'm way closer than John. I'm October 15th. Hey, let me talk to you quickly about Cook Shack before we wrap the first hour. They manufacture smoker ovens for barbecue lovers with any amount of experience, whether you barbecue in the backyard, on the competition scene, or in a five-star dining facility. Cook Shack has the unit that will do the job, and with a full line of barbecue spices, sauces, pellets, and wood chunks, it's the perfect one-stop shop. They strive to be a barbecue resource center by offering cooking classes, online recipes, how-to videos, two blogs, smoke and grilling 101s, a video cooking classroom. How about this? You can check out their world-class barbecue forum and visit their social media platforms, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Pinterest, and Google+. Pellet-fired smokers. Yeah, Cook Shack has them. They were designed by champion Ed Fast Eddie Morin, the FEC 100, PG 1000, always customer favorites. PG 1000 actually doubles as a smoker and a grill. Hot and fast or low and slow, the pellet grill line gives you the most for your money. Cook Shack Residential Electric Smokers, the number one smoker in the industry. High quality means high durability and versatility. Anything you can make in your oven, you can make in a Cook Shack. Passion and dedication drives Cook Shack's manufacturing with quality always being at the forefront. Get the best in barbecue since 1962. You can call 800-423-0698 for more information or, again, visit their website at cookshack.com. We're back to wrap the first hour right after this. Stick around. Be right back. Big name interviews, advice on cooking brisket and ribs, and the only host willing to share his honest opinion on all things important in the world of barbecue, it's the Barbecue Central Show. All right, we are back. Uh Uh-oh. Cat in the house. Thanks again to Ray Lampy for joining me last segment big things going on. He's calling for an October 17th open date of Dr. Barbecue, the restaurant. So we will pay hot attention. All right, uh, we're going to wrap the first hour and head to the second. Oh, fly cat! Whoa, geez, scared me. You are listening and watching the Barbecue Central show right here on the Barbecue Central Network. Stick around. We'll be right back for the second hour.